Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about the seven things that I wish I knew when I started. So if you've been in business for a long time, these will probably resonate. Maybe they'll open your mind. But if you're new, this is going to be a good one. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here and you're just finding the podcast, have a look around. We got five years of content. We're coming up on 300 weeks in a row. That's crazy. Five years, haven't missed one, knock on wood. Probably shouldn't have said that, but either way, uh, you got tons of content to catch up on. Every episode's 30 minutes. They're found anywhere podcasts are found and, of course, on YouTube also. Now, I have a big favor to ask you. If you've been listening for a while, you get any type of benefit from this, there's a couple things. First off, why not take the time and give me a review on iTunes? Just find the podcast in iTunes and review it. I'd love it. I'd love to see a bunch more reviews come in. Um, I had somebody leave me a two-star review because I he called me and asked what the best rubber is. And I said, there is no such thing as best rubber. It's personal preference. And every rubber is different to different people. And he didn't like that. So he left my podcast a two-star review. So go and give me a review. Be honest. Um, and it truly helps me either way. And if you didn't know, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. So here I am with my shameless plug telling you, if you haven't used me for your orders, or if you haven't let me put your orders in yet, please do. This is what I do. It's how I make my cheddar. It costs you not a penny more, but it is a virtual high five of awesomeness and uh, I need more hair gel. So <laughs> tell me the awesome things I can buy with all that that sweet, sweet commission money I make off your stuff. Um, but no, let me put that order in. In the new site, it just says save this cart. Check, uh, click that and then I can see the cart on the other side. So my number is 862-312-2026. I text 100 people a day. Go ahead and uh, text me. Uh, call me if you want text let me know everything's in your cart just let me put the order in uh, I know our site with all the changes may have been a little bit of a, a headache so hopefully I can make that easier for you and as I always say too I do own America window cleaner magazine the awesome stickers the awesome articles the awesome everything that comes with the magazine be a nerd and get a subscription to America window cleaner magazine your friends will be so jealous get them a subscription <laughs> now but go to AWC mag.com get a subscription to the magazine nerd out and be absolutely amazing so anyway shameless plug over today i'm talking about the seven things that i wish i knew now i know you guys have your own list and if you are watching this on youtube go ahead and comment your list of the things that you wish even if it's just one or two items everybody that's around you will be able to see it and it may help people also but the seven things that i wish that i knew would have sped up my entire learning process. There was some really hard lessons in the beginning. I know that there was for you too. Uh, when I started my window cleaning company, it was a long time ago and there was no um, forums. There was no groups or pro window cleaning. There was none of that stuff. So there was one email group and anytime somebody asked a question, it would like forward back to everybody. It was the longest, most hard to read thing in the world but that was started by Gary Maurer one of the um, absolute industry like original OGs um, so it was amazing benefit but it was so hard to get answers or search or any of that stuff so you had to basically figure stuff out on your own and even if I tell you all of these things I'm giving you seven things that I wish I knew I'm going to tell you and at least one of them you're going to be like mm, nope nope that's wrong this guy's wrong those are not things. That's not real. I know it. And you'll have to learn it yourself, right? So, of course, some of these that you hear, you may still have to do the hard lesson yourself. But I'm telling you, take these and drop them in your brain. And again, tell me your things that you wish you knew. If you're brand new to the industry, there's a lot more than seven things. Uh, this is just what I have time for today. So, first one today, which is a big one that took me a really long time to learn is that cleaning a window is not a big part of your company at all. Now, 
there's a lot of you who'll be like, yeah, this guy is absolutely dumb. I own a window cleaning company. It's the biggest, it's not. The biggest part of your window cleaning company is the company itself. Let me, let me, let me throw this out there. And some of you own your own company. Some of you work for somebody else that's listening. If you work for somebody else, the biggest part of your job is cleaning the window. That's your job. Clean a window. Do good. Don't let people give you callbacks, that type of thing. But if you own a window cleaning company, the biggest part of your job is not how good you clean the window. It's not that you have the cleanest windows. No. Clean is uniform. Clean is universal. Clean is a word that is either an on or off, a yes or a no, a black or a white. If it's clean, it doesn't matter if it's 90% or 100%. Now, before you freak out and send me angry emails, jersey at windowcleaner.com, uh, before you send me angry emails, hear me out. When something is clean that people don't go, oh, this is not clean, right? If they call you, I'm not telling you to do bad work because that's not clean. But if you're not getting calls, people are like, oh, this looks great. They're looking through the glass. They're not looking at the glass, right? Some of you, and I know I was guilty, focus so much on the cleaning of the glass. That's what it, oh man, that's, and then you're doing three hours on a one hour job. That doesn't make you a better window cleaner. That doesn't make your company better. That doesn't make any of that stuff. Because if it's clean, it's clean. If it's so clean that nobody calls you or sees anything or doesn't even, oh man, these look great. That doesn't necessarily mean that to you, looking at the glass is 100%. Don't focus on the clean of the glass. There's so much more. There's the company. There's the growth. There's the numbers, the profits, the, the marketing, the experience of the company. And I won't get into experience because I beat that like a dead horse. But I think, in my opinion, experience of your service is the number one thing you should be focusing on. Because experience means people review you, they refer you, they uh, return to you. Of course, everybody says that every time you get a review, unless it's bad, all oh, the windows look great. You probably didn't do it 100%. If you went over there, you probably saw there were little streaks or smears, right? Cleaning the glass is not the biggest part of your company. It took me a long time to figure that out. It took me a long time to to separate the fact that we're a luxury business and the experience of a luxury service is what people want. That's what it is, right? That's a big one. That's a big one. If you're new or you're not, tell me you agree, tell me you disagree, but cleaning is not the main part of your company. That's a big one. Uh, another one, and I'm going to preface this other one with the fact that I sell window cleaning supplies. You guys know that's how I make my cheddar. That's how I literally live, how I eat, how I you know, live my lavish lifestyle of, of you know, I don't, can't even think of what I have. I, 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 I go up to the mountains, that's what I do, uh, as you guys know. But anyway, um, my <laughs> everything exists because I sell equipment. So I'm gonna put that out there with a caveat. caveat. But, I really, 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 really believe this wholeheartedly. Okay. The equipment you use makes a big difference. Good gear is good for you. Now, hear me out on this one. Can you clean a window with a squeegee that you get from your great uncle who passed away? Yes. Can you clean a window from a Home Depot or Lowe's squeegee? Yes. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying the better the gear you have, the more enjoyable the experience, the less hangups you have, the more reliability you have. And if you're getting into water fed, which I didn't speak specifically about water fed, but if you're getting into water fed, it will change your life. It will change your business. It will change how much you can get done. You get more done. You get it done safer. If you got employees, they can get more done. They're less fatigued, less tired, meaning they're happier. They're not on ladders. The safety side of things come on. You're not concerned. I can clean a second or third story window and not have somebody with me. If I'm on a ladder, I'm not going to have somebody clean a third story window without somebody footing the ladder. If I'm trying to do it on a big 40 footer, right? Getting better equipment 
creates a better experience for the tech or for you or for your general happiness. Again, with a grain of salt, you know I love Waterfed. I love Waterfed. I think it's the greatest tool we've ever had in our industry. But I'm going to also say for inside, what about a stack ladder? Something like a stack ladder. It's the most expensive ladder that exists that I know of. A stack ladder. A 20, it's technically 21 foot ladder, which again, that's about the same size as a 24 foot extension ladder, right? In a stack ladder, the loaded kit with the levelers and everything is like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars you go, well, I can just use a $200. Yeah, you sure can. You sure absolutely can. But I love stack ladders. I love stack ladders. In fact, I have one sitting in my office, right, where I'm recording this. Stack ladders are super expensive, but it makes the job that much better. It makes the job and experience for you as the tech or your techs so much better. A stack ladder, I can use it inside. I can go into a window as opposed to around a window. I can carry sections into somebody's house and I'm not carrying a giant um, extension ladder. Better gear costs money, but it creates a better experience. I, I learned this the hard way because things are expensive. And I wanted to be cheap in my brain. And every time something would happen or break and I would just go out and buy the same crap that then eventually broke again. All that ends up being a lot to worry about. If I don't have something that's reliable, it's just going to make me fall back on needing that equipment, needing to fix the equipment, needing to buy more equipment, needing to try to buy the same thing. It's like Harbor Freight tools. Now, I'm not hating on Harbor Freight if you're a tool guy. But I have Festool tools and I have Harbor Freight tools, depending on what it is. And there is a big difference in both of those. The smoothness, but the enjoyability of using it. The reliability on it. I don't know how many times I've gone and bought a pump from Harbor Freight to go back a couple weeks later to rebuy the same pump because it went out. And then that one goes out. And I'm like, oh, now I got to buy it. I should have just bought the better thing right away, right? I mean, creating an experience, but downtime counts. If I have anything that's causing a down downtime, I'm not making money if it's down. Same thing with trucks. Having a vehicle that's worth a dang, right? Having a vehicle that, and even an old vehicle could be clean, but it has to be sound. If a vehicle breaks down, you're not making money. Not only that, but then you have to cancel or reschedule somebody if you can't make it to the job and then they don't go and you're literally losing money on top of costing you money. Good gear is epic for your company. Anyway, I'm off my high horse. Another big one that took me a long time to realize, and I'm talking years, and you might even actually be in this one too, but... I'm going to tell you something and you're going to um, you're going to let it fall out of your ear. You may be you're working right now. But here it is. You run your business, not the other way around. Most of you bold statement. Most of you let your business run you. What happens? Right? Somebody calls Hey, I'd like to get a window cleaning. Oh, great. Our first available appointment is this. Put it in. Oh, well, great. Right? Oh, uh, um, yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I have to do this. I have to get the, the customers. I have to. All of a sudden, you have to fill in the blank. Your business is running you. Now, before you think that it's not that same way, let me explain. If you... Somebody calls and they say, hey, uh, yes, I'm calling from XYZ Town and I'd like to get my windows clean. Instead of just putting it in as soon as possible and then that schedule is telling you where to go and everything, you're changing your efficiencies by finding the place that it belongs. You're running the business. If you're not doing active sales, you're just hoping people call you, your business is running you. Fate is running you. If you're not having any 
buddy do SEO for you. And you're just like, well, my, my page seems to do pretty good if you search the exact term of... If you're not being active, then the only other option is being passive. Your business is running you. If you're hoping referrals come in, the business is running you. If you're not getting that repeat work, if you're not actively getting that SEO, if you're not actively getting a new website and updating it and doing all that things and you're saying, well, I don't know, your business is running you. Now, a lot of times people say, oh, I'm going to do a million dollars next year. That's my goal. Five years to a million. Okay, how is that going to happen? Just going to, just, just, man, going to work hard. Nope. Stop. There's no plan. There's no goal. You're not running your business. You're just in a raft hoping that your business does something. Right? You've heard the name. Still, in my opinion, the greatest uh, SEO work of anybody I've ever dealt with personally. Uh, Monk SEO. But the big thing with SEO work is that people go, yeah, oh yeah, people come from my website all the time. Are you doing SEO work? Are you having a company do your SEO work now? Okay, so something possibly ranked okay. Without doing active SEO, you're not going to be ranking where you should be. If you're doing good now, people are calling from your website. It is not even a fraction of what it could be if you had someone doing your SEO. If you're just sitting back like this is going to happen, it's going to happen, that's your business running you, right? There's optimization in your scheduling. There's, there's equipment optimization. There's truck optimization. There's how many texts to a crew. If you're not the one directing everything, you're just there. For the first probably probably even longer than this. I'd say five years of business, probably even longer than that. I was so focused on like, ah, it's doing good, like it should, that I wasn't focused on like, I steer. It's like me holding the wheel and like, oh man, this road is really good, I can go straight. When you don't realize that no matter what happens, you have this, the wheel. Why not you direct it? Why, why not you control it? If you steer your company, the biggest companies that you can talk to, and I'm talking big companies, you're like, oh my gosh, growth. I know companies, guy hit a million dollar a year before he was 21. I know guys that did $700,000 in their second year. First year, 50,000, second year, $700,000. The growth on that side is absolutely absurd. Not saying that what you're doing is wrong as far as your growth, but I'm talking about the most successful companies that you will come across are directing their company. That's why they're successful. There's a lot of stuff to do in fate. My biggest account I ever had, $98,000 a year, was one account. That was a happened to be a luck. I happened to be passing it at the right time. I happened to make the call just because I was driving. It just happened to be that way. The second, or at the time, the biggest change in my company, this is way long ago, I called a cleaning company, active, by the way, active, and it just happened to be that they were in the middle of talking about how they hated their window cleaner when I called. That's fate. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of luck in business. I don't care who you are. If you say there's not, and it was all because of your hard work, you're lying. You're lying to yourself. I don't care. You're not lying to me. So there is that, but I'm the one that called. I'm the one that saw the opportunity and did it, and I was active, meaning I was controlling the ship. You have to do that. If you just sit back and hope things happen, they happen at the pace of nature, and that is not controlling anything. You run your business. Another one to make up the seven, the scheduling matters. If you want to be more optimal in your amount that you can get done or the amount the crews can do or when you're talking to these guys and they're doing x amount it's because their scheduling is on point if i'm going across town schedule the jobs in that town only on one day schedule a certain crew to be that certain route or to go that certain way don't schedule one crew that's over here to have to go over here and they're now by this crew because this crew's got to go scheduling means more things get done more efficiently don't lose sight of what scheduling can do. 
I won't even get into scheduling because this is on you. You may only be just you. You could still schedule. If it's just you, don't schedule. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm done with my last job at 2, so I'll do you at 3 no matter where you are. Why not plan them? You have stuff you could put together. If you're new in business, it's harder to do. But you can control your schedule. Less drive time, meaning you're paying less people to drive. You're using less fuel. You're getting more done. If I have drive in, in a day, if my guys are going all over town back and forth and they take two hours of time, they're only doing six hours of work. If I could have rerouted that, so now I can do, I have 30 minutes of drive time. I could do another hour and a half of work. An hour and a half of work is three man hours in a two person crew. How many crews do you have? I can get three hours of work done. What do you charge an hour? 75 bucks, 100 bucks an hour? That could be $300 every single day just by changing your schedule. Don't lose sight of scheduling. I know I did. This is one um, that is also up there. This has got to be in the top, 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 top. Repeat work is absolutely more important than new work. Because new work does happen. New work can come with passive advertisement, right? Again, if SEO is done, awesome, right? If Justin Monk gets you up to first page of Google, you will have leads coming in and you're not actually calling those people. They're calling you. New people finding you. New things coming in. Referrals, right? Reviews get people to come in. The thing that you have control of, remember, you're steering the ship, is repeat work. Dentist clothes, if you haven't heard of dentist clothes, send me a text. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. But dentist clothes, in a nutshell, is when you go to the dentist, they instantly schedule you for six months. Cool, we'll sketch you for six months. Here you go. Try the dentist clothes. Try it. I've never met somebody who has tried the dentist clothes that it didn't work. Even if people, when they first start, they're like, well, I talked to five people and only one of them did it. It's because you haven't tailored that speech right and you're unconfident in yourself. It will absolutely work, right? But people forget about the repeat business. They like you already. They've used you. They know your work. They like you. They like your crews. They've done everything. That big, huge hurdle is done. All you got to do is be like, oh, you want to use this again? Yeah. Don't lose sight of the repeat person. The repeat person is 100% more important than a new person. Everyone is instantly worried about, okay, this is what I have to do, and then as soon as this job is done, great, where's the next one? Let's get the next one. And you just like leave. I had the worst, saddest thing anybody ever told me was like, I don't, I don't, I don't call my um, customers. I don't wanna bug them. What? Yeah, yeah, I mean, if they call me, that's awesome, you know, but I don't wanna bug them. Bug them? What service are you providing? I'm providing an amazing service that makes people happy. I'm cleaning windows. When I'm done, I leave there and people are like, dang, this is awesome. Let the light in. This is great. Right? You're providing an awesome service. Focus on those people. The last bit for the seven things. I didn't know how important it was to talk to somebody. This is, uh, as a guy, we don't talk about this stuff. <clears throat> but I have to say, as as a business where everything lies on your shoulders, every hat, the HR, the payroll, the marketing, the advertising, the uh, customer complaints, the uh, um, stock inventory, the truck maintenance, the, it all lands on you. To have somebody to talk to, to have a group of people like pro window cleaning, like any of these shows, like all the friends you can make in the industry is huge. This is absolutely something that's important because when I started this, until I went to my first picnic, and even after that, by the way, there was no uh, shows. Well, there was IWCA, but um, the picnic was the thing back in the day that I went to. It opened my eyes to that Having that support itself is so big, just on a subliminal mental side, that I didn't know how valuable the friends in the industry would be. And that segues right into the last one, and the deepest one, is that I didn't know my brain would be the reason 
I screwed myself. That my brain, my mental side, my burnout, that would and is the biggest, the biggest hurdle you'll ever have in business. Look around you. There's glass for miles. Every house in history has windows. Every building, hmm, most buildings, maybe not the office, but the building itself. I've never seen a building without windows. Have you ever seen a storefront without at least one window or a pane of glass? It's kind of sketchy if you walked into a building with no windows. That's weird. Window cleaning, it's, it's not, that's not stopping you. There's more work out there than you would ever, ever be able to do. People are worried about competition. Why? There's lots of work. Be better. If you're better, you're the better choice. Eventually, people will figure that out. You're active on that. They'll find out. The work is not the problem. You are not in an area. There's so many new people that I can't. That's bull crap. Absolute crap. The reason is not competition. The reason that you're not where you are or where you want to be or where you think you used to be or the amount of work or the amount of... It's absolutely not that. The reason your company is where it is and you may not be happy in the position you are right now in your company is not because of the other guy. It's because of you. It's because of your brain. It took me a long time to realize I was on cruise control, that my brain wasn't in it, that my focus wasn't there, that my hustle wasn't there. Your brain is the thing that will ruin it for you. If your brain could be tailored in, and all of a sudden you have energy and passion, you have that hustle, the guys that are doing it have that. Do they get burned out? Of course. But to control it, to see it, to get the senses of when it's happening. My burnout happened after five years of business. I burnt out for a long time. I'm talking about like probably 18 months. I just was like, uh, and then one day I was like, oh crap. All this time passed, I didn't do anything. I really like to talk about my mental side of things for you guys. Because especially this time of year, a lot of you really need that kind of boost. But... A big part of it is not that I have always been that way either. It's just that I had to see that my brain is my B, my B word. (laughs) Yeah. Your brain is what will hinder your growth. Your brain is what will hinder your hustle. Your brain and your mental side is what will either ruin it for you at the current moment or excel you at the current moment. When you're dialed in, think of this, man. Man, I was like, boom. As soon as I did this, I got this done, and I went there, and I did this, and I did... That's your brain. That was because you allowed that to happen. Your brain was on. But then there's other days you're like, man, I didn't want to get out of bed today. Like, this job was done. I went to lunch for like an hour. I was late to the next job. I didn't... All of that is your brain. I would really like to challenge you to think about this. If you think that it's your competition, that you're not bigger. If you think that it's because there's so many guys in your area and they're charging less than you. If you're thinking all of that, step back, take the blinders off. Don't look at everybody else, but look at you. Are you absolutely at 100%? Are you working so efficiently and hustling so hard? Has that always been the case? Who have you called new work? How are you scheduling your rework? How are you getting referrals? How are you getting found? What active things are you doing? What minute of your day is not being utilized? Now, I'm not saying 
after five or six o'clock that you can't just relax. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, have you earned that? The mental side, the brain, is what controls all of that hustle, all of that. Your growth, success, and failures come from your brain. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. It took me a long time to realize that. Hopefully, now you realize it. Anyway, all right. Getting off the uh, the, the, the poppet here. But uh, if you guys didn't know, like I said, I would love reviews. I looked today. I got like 90 reviews. And it kind of upset me that some guy reviewed me only two stars or three stars because I wouldn't tell him what rubber was best for the situation he didn't tell me. So I'm not sure. Anyway, go to iTunes. Do a review. It takes two seconds. I don't care what stars you do or what words you do, but leave something. Be absolutely amazing. More importantly, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. That is what I do. That's how I live. That is why I'm not living on the streets and how I have this fancy gel in my hair that everybody seems to... Uh, I started with Jacob Williams, by the way. But everybody's like, yeah, uh, here's my order. Now you can buy some hair gel. But tell me what kind of name brand item I can buy with your commission. My number is 862-312-2026. And finally, get a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine. You are in the industry. Your mind is there. Go to awcmag.com. Get it. It's a real magazine. It comes to your door every month. Get subscriptions. Screw it. This is the year. Get the subscription. I can see you get the subscription. It makes me smile to see all those people who are really just blowing their business up. And uh, it also means the world to me. So thanks for everything. Hopefully this was an enjoyable episode. Hopefully I didn't make you cry too much. But uh, until next time, at least go out there and learn a thing or two. But more importantly, go out and be epic.